Hi everyone, I am Eliana Cazeta. I am a professor from State University of Santa Cruz, and I will talk today about the effects of habitat loss on the persistence of a keystone palm species Euterpe edulis in the Brazilian Atlantic Forest. Uh, we, are, we all know that habitat loss is considered a threat to conservation because it is one of the main drivers of the current extinction rates. The negative effects of habitat loss on several groups, such as birds, mammals, plants, and so on, are very well documented. But forest loss can also have um, demographic consequences for plants. This might occur due to negative effects um, of forest loss on each one of the uh, plant, uh, stage of plant life cycle. For instance, flower and fruit production might decrease due to a decrease in plant pollinators that are known to be affected by forest loss. Forest loss is also known to affect frugivores, with negative consequences for seed dispersal process. Thus, uh, it's reasonable to expect an increase in dispersal limitation in the forested landscapes. Also, local plant recruitment might be limited by indirect effects of landscape scale forest loss. Forest loss can change the canopy openers, can change the local microclimate, which in turn can affect seed germination and also the early recruitment of plant species. Forest loss can also affect predators and herbivore assemblages with detrimental consequences for plant recruitment as well. So to, um, to evaluate uh, demographic bottlenecks due to forest loss, we selected as a model this palm species, uh, the palm heart Euterpiedus. Uh, this species has high ecological importance because its fruits are a keystone resource for frugivores, such as birds and mammals, including periods of fruit scarcity. Uh, also, uh, the species has great economic value because its apical meristem, the palm heart, is one of the most harvested non timber forest products uh, from the Brazilian Atlantic Forest. The exploitation of the palm heart uh, directly causes individual deaths. Uh, so, to perform this work, we mapped uh, several forest fragments in the southern, um, uh, southern Atlantic forest from Bahia. I will not give further details uh, about the region, but if you want to know more, please watch the great talk from Maida Benchimol. Uh, was the talk previous, uh, the previous talk here in the Palm Channel. And she gave a lot of details about uh, the study region. So we mapped uh, the forest fragments in these two regions. Uh, the regions, they share several features such as the same uh, forest type, soil and climate, but they dif differ in history of land use. So the north uh, um, region is more forested and the south region is deforested. So part of the results that I will show today, we sample in 20 uh, forest fragments and some of the results uh, were performed in nine or eight uh, forest fragments. Uh, so we calculated the, the amount of forest cover in surrounding landscapes from the center of each forest fragment, uh, each one of the 20 forest fragments, so that we have fragments uh, with about 6%, 5 6% of forest cover at the landscape scales, and fragments with about 85% of forest cover at the landscape scale. So, in each forest fragment, we set up a, a 0 0.5 hectare plot and sample all uh, Euterpiadulis individuals. Uh, from different ontogenetic stages, seedlings, two classes of juvenile, immature individuals, and adults. So we marked and counted all uh, individuals inside the plot. We also perform uh, phenology or observations, phenological observations. So we marked the adult individuals 
And during one year, we recorded the presence of flowers, immature fruits, and ripe fruits. And also calculated reproductive success, that is the conversion of immature fruits to ripe fruits. And also estimate the time of fruit availability in each one of the uh, first fragments. Uh, here is some <clears throat> preliminary results yet, but we, we uh, made some focal observations in eight forest fragments, about 20 hours of observations per fragment, and recorded bird species and behavior consuming Euterpia fruits. Finally, uh, we set up some uh, recruitment experiments in, in in which we install a cage um, inside the 15 cages in each forest fragment. And so we have a closed and an open treatment with six seeds each and follow the, the seed, uh, seed fate during six months. Each, mass, each month we recorded the number of seeds that germinated, predation by invertebrates and vertebrates, and early recruitment of the species. Uh, so our results um, um, for the demography of uh, Euterpia endulis, um, seedlings and adults show uh, a response to the region. So if you remember, uh, we have a north and a south region, a more forested and more deforested regions. So we found a strong difference between these two regions uh, in which the density of seedlings and adults is higher in uh, the forested uh, region and lower in the, in the deforested region. And juvenile, both classes of juveniles and immature decrease as forest cover decreases at the landscape scale. And the model, including only forest cover, was most parsimonious for juveniles and immature individuals of Euterpia. Uh, so we follow 165 individuals, uh, indi uh, adult individuals, 75 of them produced ripe fruits. And the number and per percentage of flowers unripe in nature fruits was not affected by forest cover at the landscape scale. Also, fruit abortion was around 25% in all forest sites and also did not vary with forest cover at the landscape scale. On the contrary, the mean duration time of mature, mature fruits was affected by forest cover loss. Uh, the mean duration time of fruits was around two months in, in our sample sites, but it decreased, strongly decreases as the deforestation increases at the landscape scale. A possible explanation for this pattern was the increase in frugivore abundance um, in the forested landscapes. Uh, it's interesting to note here that the increase in abundance is due to an increase in generalist frugivore uh, abundance increase in those landscapes. So usually um, fruit pulp, pulp consumers increase in, in the increase in this kind of frugivores might be a possible explanation for the decrease in fruit availability in the forested landscapes. This is uh, an hypothesis. Our data is very preliminary. So uh, what our focal observation uh, results show, our preliminary results show, it's only five species recorded in 105 nine hours of observations, 11 visits and 50 fruits consumed. Uh, this is uh, very low uh, values. So just to, to give you some comparison, here is a data from Cardoso Island, a very well preserved forest uh, in Sao Paulo State, Atlantic Forest in Sao Paulo State. This is a different study and the authors evaluated an altitudinal gradient but I think just to give an, an idea about the differences in number of uh, visitors and fruits consumed. So more or less the same uh, amount of hours of observation. Uh, the authors recorded 11 
uh, sorry, 12 species in more than 300 visits and a thousand fruits uh, consumed. So 30 times and 20 times more visits and fruits cons consumed in also um, an Atlantic forest. So this might give an idea of how the forest, how defaulted in, is our, our landscapes independent of the habitat amount at the landscape scale. Um, because we, we this is preliminary results and also we have a um, very uh, low number of species and visits, we did not perform further uh, analysis of this. But this gives an idea uh, of a possible seed dispersal limitation in our in our areas. So our results for recruitment. Uh, first, we found no effect of forest loss on um, seed germination um, in open and cold treatment. So forest loss did not affect uh, germination. We have three low values here, three landscapes, three fragments with low values of um, seed germination because seed predation on those forest sites uh, was very high and the seeds were consumed before uh, they germinated, but still no effect of uh, forest loss. Uh, the emerging of seedlings differ between the close and open treatment. The close treatment, uh, the number of emerging seedlings decrease uh, 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 with a decrease in, in, forest law, in forest cover, and no effect was found in the open treatment. So the um, recruitment was very low, independent of the landscape. Uh, which factors might limit Eutherpidulis recruitment? So, uh, mainly seed predation. So, uh, what we found is an, an increase in predation by invertebrates in the forested landscapes. So, independent of the treatment, open or closed treatment, the number of uh, seeds predated by vertebrates uh, increase as deforestation increase at the landscape scale. And on the contrary, the number of seeds predated by vertebrates increase as forest cover increase in the landscape. So of course here um, uh, we have results only for the open treatment because um, small mammals um, are not uh, um, able to enter the cage, so we don't have predation by vertebrates, we did not observe predation by vertebrates in the cold treatment. So we have this opposing patterns in seed predation by vertebrates and invertebrates, and combined they explain the low recruitment of the species, independent of, of, um, of forest cover at the landscape scale. So to conclude, um, our results show uh, that we, we don't have a, a limitation on fruit production. So fruits are available uh, for seed, seed dispersers. Uh, so no source limitation in our um, fragments. However, uh, our preliminary results indicate a possible strong um, seed dispersal limitation uh, due to the low number of um, species, visits, and fruits consumed by, by food viewers in our sample sites. Also to an increase in generalist uh, species uh, in the forested landscapes. Uh, our, our results um, also indicate a possible recruitment limitation uh, due to um, different um, patterns of seed predation by vertebrates and invertebrates. So independent of the forest amount at the landscape scale, limitation is low due to different pressures of seed predation. And also the establishment of the species um, might be limited because uh, our demographic studies show um, a decrease in juveniles and immature individuals in the forested landscapes. 
So I would like to thank you, the CISBIOTA team, all CISBIOTA team, and also the PAL team, Leisa, Laís, Adriele, and Fernando, and most of the data that I showed today are from their master's and PhD students. Uh, I would like to thank the, the all agents that funding uh, this research and thank you for listening.